So yeah, well, welcome back everyone. <laughs> um, like I said, uh, yeah, so we're kind of in this weird spot right now where I think most of you guys are gonna be doing the Mod 4 project stuff. Um, we'll talk about that. Like you guys are doing Mod 4 assessments um, this week and next week. Um, we'll talk about that towards the end of it, but I wanted to make sure we take some time to talk about Capstone since now we're kind of like in Capstone mode. Um, so which is kind of like extended project, um, like project mode, except it lasts for like two months. Um, which kind of gives you the scale of like, you know, like what time and effort you want to be able to take into your capstone and stuff. And I think this is a really good thing too, because um, you'll hear me repeat this a whole bunch of times, but I think your capstone really should be the project when someone asks you, tell me about a data science project you've done. The capstone should be the thing that you go to. Um, and that's the kind of level you want. Now, don't freak out yet if you're like, oh my gosh, this seems like such a huge project. It's also not like a master's or a PhD thesis. It's not the equivalent to that too. Really what you're trying to do is show something that goes from end to end and that you can talk about, like if an interviewer talks to you, you can talk about it at length into details. An interviewer can say, well, have you thought about this? And you either one, yeah, I actually did do that. Or two, so, you know, I haven't thought about that, but I think this is what I could do with this. In, like, this is the way I would have done it in my project. That's the kind of knowledge you want to be able to have. And this is basically is the thing that you want to basically use to show off a little bit. So we'll go over the details on that. Um, just quick th show of thumbs and stuff like that. Who's read through the Mod 5 um, capstone description? I see a couple head shakes. Okay, has anyone read it then? Yeah? No? That's okay. All right, so after this, you just make sure you read it, right? Um, so, uh, I, and also I will tell you, it's probably good that you're doing this first before reading it, because there are some things the curriculum talks about, which I think are a little confusing, and I'll try to clear up some of that. That way you don't miss that. Um, also, I have, I have slightly different expectations than what the curriculum originally states, um, which I think they're good things, but um, yeah, you won't be confused. You'll hear this first. So let me go ahead and start sharing my screen, and we'll move right along. Um, so I have a lot of tabs going on right now. So. Let me share that one specific tab. That's it. So I'm trying to make sure that is not it. There it is. Okay. And all right, you guys can see capstone overview right here, the of contents and all that. Okay, good. Sorry, I just have to move my windows around a little bit and everything. Okay, so. Um, like I said, make sure you guys actually read uh, what's in the description of the capstone and everything. Uh, but this basically is kind of like my little sh shorthand. So it kind of introduces you guys, tell you the due dates for your specific cohort and everything like that. Because I had a couple of cohorts go through capstone. So um, first thing I want to show off a little bit. So outside resources, references, right? So I talked about the repo. I'll share this notebook to you guys so you guys have access to it too afterwards. Um, but Main thing is make sure you guys read that repo for the mod um, capstone project. Um, and then we have a couple of things that we'll go over today, choosing a project, like what that entails, like use some advice I can give you. And then some general project advice, which we've actually talked about before, um, but it's worth reiterating. And then if you really want to, I actually have a recording from another cohort that um, went through capstone back in earlier this year. Um, and some of it might be really useful because they kind of had some questions and stuff that like help clarify like what they should proceed and stuff like that. So we'll go over that stuff maybe a little bit later, but I just wanted to point that out here. So the capstone project itself. So your capstone project, like I mentioned, is basically your end to end project. It's like your big pro, you know, big project that you want to do um, to kind of essentially show that what you know, right? And what you know isn't just the technical stuff. It's not about just like, oh, I can write code, I can do data cleaning. It's also being able to talk about it as well. And that's kind of like my big emphasis for you guys is I see a lot of people do really cool projects, but haven't really thought about how they communicate these ideas and how they can tie it into like our business problem or business understanding. Um, business with air quotes, because it doesn't have to literally be a business, it can be a nonprofit. But that's the kind of goal I want to set for you guys. So again, an end-to-end -end project that shows you can pull insight relevant to your stakeholders. It's that main communication part. And everything, I have to say, it doesn't, in my opinion, it's not about what kind of fancy model you do, what kind of fancy, you know, this you pulled their data from. It's all about saying, hey, did you identify a problem and then actually give insight and communicate it well to your stakeholders? That should be your ultimate goal for your capstone because I will tell you is that um, one kind of like a little, not, it's not really a secret, but like one thing I hear a lot of people who are interviewing for, like with interviewers or hiring managers, 
um, looking for data scientists and then interviewing people, potential, potential uh, candidates, right, for those positions, what will usually happen, they'll ask them a question and they'll answer the question, but they kind of miss, I don't know how to say this, not, not miss the point, but kind of like, um, I'll give you an example. Like a classic example is like, um, they might say, we give a fake scenario, we lose 10% of, um, we found that we lost 10% of user engagement, you know, what would you do? And what people tend to go towards, and this is usually what I hear from like people kind of giving like this, not advice, but like feedback, is people tend to say, okay, well, we lost user engagement, so let's go ahead and try to get more user engagement with a recommendation system, you know, like maybe we can suggest, you know, um, I don't know, whatever the company is, right? It's like, oh, better videos or better articles, or, you know, we can look at, you know, divvy up their um, parts and see what they're most closest likely to or something like that, like trying to do something to improve that rate, where the correct answer really is starting off with saying, well, why did we lose 10% of our user engagement? Like what happened there? And talking about what you would do to find out why you lost at 10% and then acting on that. And so that's the kind of thought process you should think about is being like, it's sometimes your stakeholders will ask you questions or ask you to do things, but they're really asking you a different question. And that's the kind of thing that you as it is and just have to kind of identify because you can essentially are this communicator of um, actual analysis modeling to someone who, you know, or a group of people who don't have that background and making those decisions. Um, I think I mentioned this before. I've had a couple people who are, they work as data scientists, but they were literally like their job title was decision scientists. I think that's like a more accurate term sometimes because it's like, oh, you really are making a decision based on the data you have. So that's what you want to really emphasize in your capstone because it shows a lot. Like if you can show that you can communicate well and think about the problem well, people are going to want to hire you. Okay. So that's kind of, I want you to like really think about this one because I think it's easy to forget about all the technical stuff. Okay. So these are kind of like a little bit of my expectations. So expectations from you, uh, you should be able to talk about the project in, in an interview. So that means like you should expect yourself when you're done with this capstone, you should be able to talk about this project at a drop of a hat. Someone says, hey, tell me about this project and you should be able to talk about it pretty quickly and concisely about what you did, what you found and why it was important. Um, the main thing is that you can show that you can pull insight from a problem or from a data set, right? Um, so that's kind of the idea there. And then expectations for me, like, so I specifically say for me, right? So these are things that you should expect from me is that um, I'm gonna be guiding you. So I'm not here to obviously tell you exactly what to do, right? Cause it's gonna be your project. You're gonna pick your own data set. You're gonna pick your own like topic, um, but I'm gonna help guide you to see, kind of identify parts where I've noticed people have um, had the most pain points and things that I think that might be helpful for you. Now, of course, if you want to do something like, let's say I, I give some advice and you're like, Oh, like, I don't think that's the right way. I think I want to do it this way instead, like all power to you. Right. Like I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. And I could be completely wrong. Um, but you know, just kind of like know that I'm if I guide you to kind of help you along. Um, also help with organizing. So basically making sure that not just organizing your actual pro end product, but also organizing your work. So I'm going to give you a little bit of timeline. Technically, like the clock starts now for Capstone and then it won't end until November 6th. Um, but like, I like to give you guys a little bit of like little tiny deadlines to kind of help you along. So you'll help me kind of do that too. Um, I'll give you advice on what will make your project um, be. Does Victor know how to talk here? Advice on what will make your project good to talk about. I don't know. <laughs> I think someone wasn't, I wasn't paying attention to myself when I was writing this. Um, basically saying like what things you should focus on your project that will bring a lot of emphasis when you talk about it with another person. So um, I might say, for example, I'll tell you like, for example, um, someone might wanna do a lot of like, you know, AWS stuff, you know, um, trying to get this started. But that's, it takes a lot of effort sometimes where maybe that effort should instead be put into like the actual analysis or modeling steps versus trying to get basically the data engineering part go through. And I might say, you know, maybe take that focus away from there because it sounds really great, but you're gonna get the most bang for your buck by focusing on these areas so that you can talk about this versus if you focus something that's more for the data engineer or even like more on the software engineering side, those are really great skills, but they're not your main skills you wanna do if you're looking for a data science position. So those are kind of things I'll try to give you guys advice on. Um, then implementation help, obviously, if you guys are trying to do a certain model and stuff like that. I don't know everything. Um, for the record, time series is not my specialty. Um, it's probably my weakest point, um, but I try to you know, give you guys advice too and point you guys in good directions and stuff. 
Um, so I'll try my best to either help you guys with what your implementation is or point you in the right directions to like where you can get that advice. Okay. Um, and then just advice beyond the technical. So we can also talk about things like uh, job stuff. Like over the next couple months, we can talk about things like, you know, when you're looking for a job, what to look out for, um, how to identify what kind of job you want versus um, what job that looks like is on there. So I like to just say is that your job description is like a wish list. So we can talk about stuff beyond the capstone too and beyond the technical things. Okay, any questions so far? I'm kind of trying to go through this relatively quickly. Um, yeah, I know I'm giving you guys a lot of information. But so any questions? No, yep, sound pretty good. Cool. All right, so let's talk about general timeline. So like I said, it's about two months, give or take. Um, September 14th, so yesterday to November 6th, right? November 6th is kind of like the official end date of like when your cohort is supposed to be done in the material. Um, I will tell you is that if you do reach November 6th and it's like not it's like you're a couple days off or something, we probably have a little wiggle room, but don't count on that, right? So definitely try to think in your mind, November 6th, I am done. I am graduated. I'm completed the thing and I'm just looking for jobs essentially. Or hopefully you already have a job, you know, like because um, we had a couple people where they, as they finish the capstone, they actually already have a job um, from just job searching. So that's your goal. So these are the little mini deadlines, which I'm like, the only real deadline I'm going to tell you guys is really that November 6th is that's kind of the ultimate deadline. But the rest of these I think will help you along um, and getting to these deadlines will help you make sure that you move on. Because I've seen a lot of people take time in their capstone where they might literally put it off longer and longer because they want to go deeper and deeper and deeper in one area. Um, or they are kind of like, you know, honestly procrastinating stuff how that happens. Um, this will hopefully keep you on like track and everything. So the first deadline I kind of have is having your main data chosen. So when I say having your main data chosen, that also implies that you know what the business problem is, you know what the topic is, and you know what data set you'd use to answer that, those problems. So this right here, September 25th, is my deadline. I will say the sooner you can get this part done, the better. Because once you identify what your business problem is, what data set you'd use, right, then everything else is going to be easier in actually doing the project. A lot of people get stuck on this very first part where they have an idea of what they want to do, but they didn't find a data set. And then they find it's actually very difficult to find that data or they find it's like very difficult to answer this problem or something along those lines. So what this deadline is, is that I want you guys, when you guys find your topic and you find your data set, I want you guys to message me and say, Hey, this is what project I'm doing. This is like the project topic, the business problems I'm trying to answer. This is my data set. And I want you to do one other thing for me. You don't have to do a full EDA, but I want you to open up that data set and make sure you can load the data into, you know, like a data frame or something. Basically, I want to make sure that you're like, oh yeah, I have a bunch of pictures. Like, so well, what does that mean? Or I've had some people who's like, oh, I have audio files. I'm like, that's really cool. But I want to make sure you'd be able to actually do something with them first. So at the very least, open up the data frame and making sure that you have data that you can actually answer. What sometimes people will find, they'll have a business problem, they have a data set in mind that they found on Kaggle or somewhere else, and they'll share that. And I said, did you look at this data set yet? And they said, not yet. And I'm like, look at it first, and you might find that it's not actually what you want. Um, so once you find that, though, your business problem, you, can, you know, business problem, your um, the topic essentially in the data set, I want you to send those things to me just in a Slack message um, before 25th. And then that way I can give you the okay to move on forward. That way you don't get stuck early on where like you might try to pull up a problem or a data set that's going to give you more issues. Okay. Does that make sense to people? Cool. And I'll remind you guys too, um, as we kind of go through. Um, but that's kind of like the little deadline here is that um, if September 25th comes around, I'll probably message you and say, Hey, how's it going? Like pick a topic yet? Got a data set yet? Um, just in this, because I want to make sure you don't get stuck um, and that way you can move on. And again, this doesn't have to be an amazing, like, it doesn't have to be a PhD thesis. Like, that's not what we're looking for. It doesn't have to be something that, something that no one's ever done before. Really what you're trying to show is an end-to-end -end project that shows your skill set and shows your communication and shows that you can gain insight on a business problem. Okay, cool. All right, after this point, uh, week three, October 3rd, is your next deadline of saying you have data explored and cleaned. And this is one, this is why I kind of like week two. If you wait until this deadline, right, September 25th, it's probably going to take you more than a week 
to actually get this data clean and explored and stuff like that. But that's why I'm kind of trying to encourage you guys, like take the data set in your pocket early on and then use that like two weeks time to really explore it and clean it and stuff, getting it ready for the actual modeling step. Um, I think at this point, you know, data cleaning can take a long time, but I think you guys are experienced enough now where you guys probably feel relatively comfortable like what steps you need. Like you can, if I gave you a data set right now, or you can picture a data set in your mind, you can probably get an idea of like what things you would explore, what things you'd look out for cleaning. Like I think you guys have enough experience now of seeing that, okay? Um, and then from there, I don't really ask you guys specific stuff. I might check in and say, hey, you know, send me what you have, you know, put your stuff into a GitHub repo as you're doing this. That way if you're making frequent commits and stuff like that. If you share with me a repo, we can check it out. We can share it with each other, um, see what other people are doing to keep each other, you know, help each other out and everything like that. That's what you guys should do. And then we'll have assessments starting on October 26. And so that's when we'll start doing the capstone assessments, just like a project assessment. And the capstone assessment really is just like a project assessment, except it's the capstone. So it's nothing too scary. It's nothing too crazy and stuff like that. Uh, in fact, you guys have essentially been practicing doing this um, since, you know, mod one project. So, yeah. And that's kind of it. Um, that's kind of the general timeline. Um, these dates, again, they're like, they're not strict, but I think they really help. And I think these three, these two dates in particular are the things that you usually catch students like from finishing up their capstone on time. So that's why I'm putting those there specifically. Okay, any questions? Hmm? All right, cool. All right, so some advice on this project itself. So um, there's a few things, you know, that I usually, students kind of ask and stuff like this, and this kind of helps identify some of those pain points and stuff like that and things that kind of slow down. So one is like, um, if you can make it, like picking your data set, data set and problem, if you can, if you can make it related to the industry you want to go in, it doesn't have to be related to the industry though. So if you know, for example, you want to go into finance, right? You might want to look at like what projects would be relevant to finance um, and kind of going in that specific direction. If you have or um, don't know what industry you really want to go to, you're like, you know, I want to do data science, obviously, but I'm not really sure exactly what specifically. Um, that's perfectly fine the big thing that's going to stand out is having a project that you can talk about. And usually a project that you can feel excited about that you feel interested in is going to come off really well when you're talking to someone interviewer. Um, even if you know what industry you're going through, but you have an idea of a project and you think you actually have a pretty good idea of what you would do and you think it'd be really interesting, do that. Like there's not a reason why you can't do that because the main thing is that you're showing that you can take a data set and really talk about the insights in it. Right to talk about it in the, uh, related to a business problem. And those skills are generalizable. They're not specific to the industry you're going to apply to. Um, I'll tell you is that like, I've had like me personally, like one of my products that I really liked um, that I liked and I was really interested in was this American Sign Language project, which was kind of like image recognition. I'll tell you right now, there's not too many places right now that are kind of like hiring specifically for American Sign Language recognition. And I wasn't expecting to, but it was a project that I was really interested in. I could talk in full detail about. I could talk about the nuances of the issues and stuff like this and how it could relate to how it could be used. And that's the thing that stands out to people. People, like, I'll, I'll tell you, like, when I talk to people about these problems, you can hear, like, I've actually gotten this feedback before. It's like, you sound really excited about this project. Like, it shows me that you can really think about this. And that's the thing that you want to stand out is that you can talk about a project well and you can talk about it in detail to, with another person. Okay. So does it have to be related to the industry? No, but it does help, yeah, especially if you want to go in that direction. But if you are going into a certain industry and you're just not sure what kind of project or you feel really strongly about another project, go with that one. Okay. Um, next advice I have is don't use boring data sets. So what I mean by that is like, make sure the data set is not too simple. And what I mean by that is not that like, um, I'm not, I don't think I have a good analogy for this, but I'll give you an example of this for the student had for their mod four project equivalent. And they were doing, they wanted to do a deep learning. This is a different iteration of the curriculum. They wanted to do a deep learning problem, but they, they could choose their own data set. And I told them like, you want to make sure there's enough like data that's not going to be categorical, categorical based because you're going to basically end up finding a point where basically just by the fact that it is this category, it's just going to be, this is the result, like classification. And they decided to go with it. And 
they did the whole project, they did it really well, but at the end they were kind of saying like, you know, you were kind of right, you know, it did feel too straightforward. There were no really twists and turns and stuff like that. So when he talked about the problem itself, the project, they were kind of saying, it's like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel exciting. Like, it, I don't feel like I could talk about this in an interview. And so that's the kind of thing that you want to make sure you don't have it so simple that like, it's very straightforward that like, it doesn't feel exciting to you. And it kind of comes off when you just read a pro project that's like essentially has two simple features that it just seems too straightforward and just not going to come off really well in an interview. It's just, you, you've done a great project, but you're just not going to have that same fire. Hopefully that makes sense to people. Um, yeah. So anyway, this is why I say, you know, make sure to send me kind of your data set or at least a link to your data set to where it is. So I can kind of look at it ahead of time just to see like if there's some kind of like little like red flags I see it's like, oh, this might be a little too simple. You might want to either use a different data set or combine it with multiple data sets too, to see how that works. Okay. Makes sense. Cool. All right, cool. And again, if there are any questions, just feel free to interrupt me. Um, okay. So this is one thing that I like to emphasize, and this is actually slightly different from what the curriculum says. The curriculum will actually say um, it should be a supervised learning project. I disagree with that strongly because the whole point of this isn't to build a supervised learning project. Your goal of this capstone is really to say an end-to-end -end project, to say, I took a problem, a business problem, identified it, identified what data set could help me with this, explored, cleaned, analyzed, and potentially modeled that to answer my questions to these stakeholders. So the problem is, is that sometimes people really think about like a supervised learning project, uh, like ML focused, machine learning focused. But I've had projects from other students that were much more focused on the analysis. And some of those projects, to be honest, were more interesting and more, I would say, more impressive to one interview setting than some of the supervised learning projects I've seen. And the reason why is because they were really answering a question. They weren't just trying to shoehorn a supervised learning project in there because it was a requirement. And so it doesn't have to be completely unfocused on ML. In fact, I had a student said, you know, I don't feel like I need to do, like, it's like, I, I don't actually feel super great about doing like a deep learning model. Because I just don't feel like I would like be able to talk about it, stuff like that. And it's like, well, your analysis on this project is really great. Like, maybe one thing you can do is actually an unsupervised learning pro um, um, technique to help the analysis through. And that actually was a really interesting project that they ended up pursuing. So the important thing is basically making sure if you're doing something like ML and stuff like this, which most likely you guys will be, but just making sure that it does answer a question. It's not just shoehorned in, just trying to do ML for the sake of doing ML. Does that make sense to people? Okay, I see nods. So again, it doesn't have to be super complex. You're not trying to show off saying, look, I can do supervised learning because you have already done supervised learning. Like you've been doing that with your mod four project, possibly mod three project, right? Um, the whole point basically is to say, we could do end to end. If you include supervised learning in there, awesome. But to be frank, no one, like usually people don't care specifically about saying, oh, do you know how to use this deep learning technique or this special technique? You know, some, that's not always the case, but in general, what they're looking for is like, can you identify when you need to use a technique when it's needed, if that makes sense. So you hear a lot of data scientists talk about saying logistic regression. Logistic regression is perfectly fine. And some people don't even consider logistic regression as machine learning. But if it answers the problem, who cares? <laughs> like, no one cares if you did like a neural network if it didn't do anything. If it's trash and garbage, why use it? So that's the kind of idea that you want to kind of approach here. Okay, Does that makes sense to people. But for the record, I think most of you guys will have some kind of ML, sometimes you will do deep learning in some cases um, in your capstone project, but don't feel like you have to do that. Like you have to squeeze it in there. Um, this is, should be its own bullet point. I, don't know, I did this last time, I never fixed it. Um, so make sure you use a process like Awesome or CRISPM. We talked about those what, back in mod two, I think. Like it's been a while, um, but uh, these are kind of process that you should think of. And this really starts off with what's the number one thing It's identifying the business problem, identifying the business understanding, identifying what the problem is before you choose the data set, right? It's like this little cycle right here, which I really like, cause it's like very um, like general, it kind of applies to awesome and crisp VM is you identify that business understanding, then you get the data, data mining in this case. Um, 
a little warning about data mining. If you have to do a lot of web scraping, it might not be a good idea for this project, but talk to me if, you, if that's the way you want to get your data. Um, but you basically would do your data acquisition at this stage, and then you would clean it, explore it, feature engineering, predictive modeling, data visualization, all to answer back to that business problem, their business understanding. Okay, so definitely use a process, right? A framework. And you can also talk about saying, oh, you know, when you talk about an interview, say, you know, was well, following a Chris DM project or framework or awesome framework, and you can talk about the steps you took. And if I were an interviewer and I hear that thing and I hear people say, oh, I'm using this awesome framework and this is the way I proceeded, I'd be like, ding, ding, ding. I'm like, good. This person's organized. So I don't have to like chase them down, figure out what they're doing and stuff like that. Because that's what you want to do when you're interviewing with someone. You want to emphasize saying, hey, like, I'm a good person to work with. I'm organized. I can work on a team. I can have a framework and stuff. Other people can follow what I'm doing. Okay, cool. Um, I have a little advice, like I said, set many day deadlines. Deadlines are different for everyone. Everyone works a little bit differently, but in general is that I say, is, I kind of mentioned this before, is have a little mini deadline where you're only gonna take the next few days to do data exploration. And then after the end of that fourth day you, or third day or whatever it is, you stop and then move on to the next part because there's always gonna be more you can do for any one of these steps. You can always get more data. You can always explore a little bit more, check out you know, some interesting details. You can always get better features. You can always build a better model. You can always build better visualizations and stuff like that. There's always a way to improve this, but important part is basically reaching a point where you have a sound project. And that sound project is not gonna rely on just one aspect of your project. So putting a little mini deadlines where like, okay, after four days of data exploration, if I'm not done, I'm going to pause it there, move on to the next step. And if I have time, I'd come back to more exploration or whatever I want to do. Make sense to people? Yeah. Usually the two steps that people kind of get stuck on when they're in this part, it's either data exploration and uh, actual predictive modeling. So usually people are like trying to do a better and better model. And again, you don't have to get the best model. You don't even have to get like I've seen amazing results in projects where their accuracy was only 40%, which sounds really low. Actually, I actually recently just saw a capstone, like literally their accuracy was like 1% accuracy, but it's also the reason because they had a thousand different classes and it was a very hard problem, but they were able to actually gain insight to the business and saying like how their work was relevant, even though it wasn't actually very accurate in the overall sense. So that's the kind of thing you want to bring to it again. It's not about the specific, you know, model. You're talking about a full process itself. Okay. Makes sense to everyone so far? Cool. Yeah, you can hear me emphasize the same stuff over and over again. So hopefully that's really digging into your brain now. Um, any questions before I kind of keep moving on? No? Thank you guys. You guys are all quiet and all set and ready. <laughs> okay. All right, so some fun extra stuff. So this is where I'll kind of put in a little bit of um, emphasis that this is my personal preference and my personal opinions. Feel free to disagree with it. There are plenty of other people who disagree with it, including I'm sure um, people who are teaching data science, but this is where I'll kind of like put a little like, you know what, maybe don't consider this part. Uh, a dashboard, so you guys, thumbs up for people who know what dashboard is when I say a data dashboard. Okay, I saw a couple of thumbs up. So if you're not sure, if you're like, I think I've heard of that, but I'm not really sure, a data dashboard basically is a way to interact with your data. And so the idea is usually you might have a dashboard with someone who might be an, an analyst or someone who's not a data scientist, or maybe it is other data scientists, where they can basically take your work and kind of play around with it and see their insights from there or explore your data in the, in the context of you kind of like filtering through and saying, oh, this is the important stuff. If you ever play around with like, um, little graphs where you can adjust the slider and this graph changes and stuff like that. That's like a data dashboard, essentially, like a simple one. Um, there's also like interactive websites, same idea, right? These are really cool things. And those are the things that like really stand out. Like if you go on like Reddit, like data is beautiful. And like you're like, oh, there are all these really cool things you can adjust and stuff like that. Um, they're really awesome. However, I will say is that I don't think you should focus on this on your capstone. Now, it's not that I don't think they're really great and they're really useful. I think the hard part is in a time setting like this, when you're doing a lot of like this whole process right here, this data dashboard really is just one part of it. And the thing about it with the dashboarding in particular is that in some ways it's gotten better and better, but in some ways it really does focus on much more of almost essentially like software engineering skills, 
which in my opinion are not the thing that you want to focus on. The, uh, like they're great skills, but when you're applying for these jobs, you're probably not applying for a software engineering position. You're probably applying for a data science position, maybe data analyst position, maybe even machine learning engineer position. Not so much a software engineer. And these things with the data dashboard interactive website to make these work properly, stuff like that, which look really cool, they can take too much effort, in my opinion, versus what you could have focused on all of this analysis and talk about these details. So I will say is that like, if you want to do a dashboard, like really cool, awesome, especially if you already have some experience, maybe you've had some experience with Tableau, Power BI, um, Flask is one way we can do dashboards or um, so like Plotly has a dash, I think I remember that right, uh, like dashboard and stuff like that, which is built off of Flask. Um, if you have some experience that awesome, but I would make sure you do all of this stuff first before you try building a dashboard. Um, I will say is that it's gotten better where you don't have to do as much. In fact, if you're really, really it's like, I really want to build a dashboard so I can at least kind of show this off a little bit, which does help sometimes um, in people seeing your product project. Um, one thing I would recommend is using something called Streamlit. And I think we might actually do like a study group on this, uh, maybe like maybe next week or the week after. Um, but Streamlit, I found like, and honestly, I've just started using it myself and I'm just amazed by it. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this makes dashboarding a lot easier and straightforward. And it doesn't have to be super pretty and like amazing and stuff like that. Because again, all you're trying to do as a data science is trying to give insight. So if you can do that really quickly and make something like awesome, which Streamlit is basically like, you can literally add like, like a couple extra lines of code to your already project. Um, so we might talk about that maybe in the future, but I don't want you guys to focus so much heavily on this. Now, if you do want to, like, you're like, you know what, Victor, like, I really want to make this dashboard. And I think there's a reason why, like, I'm an exception to what all the things you said. Cool. Just let me know. And that way I can help you out. Um, but I don't want you guys to like, think you have to do that too. Because sometimes I have had students, like, they really focus on dashboard and a couple of them come up to me afterwards. They're kind of like, you know what? I think you're right. That took me a lot more effort than I was ready for. Um, I had some weird, you know, bugs and stuff like this. I should have just kind of skipped over and just focused on this part. So I'm just kind of identifying what I've seen in the past. Okay. Does that make sense? Like, I don't want to like harp on like saying, oh, you should do a dashboard ever. I think they're really great, but I think um, they can detract from this guy over here. But okay. that could just be an add on at the end if you have yes. time, right? You can do your project and then at the end you say, oh, I still got some time. Let me play with this stuff. And if you complete it, great. And if you don't, you don't, right? Exactly. No, perfect. And I think that's the right thing. In fact, I would even say is if you finish this project, like let's say you don't do any dashboard, but you really wanted to. And so you decide, you know, I need to focus on all of this part, skip over this dashboard aspect. And you finish the project, you graduate. There's no reason why you can't go back to your projects and go create a dashboard for that project you just did. Like, in fact, there's no reason after you guys graduate, if you want to go back to your mod one project and say, you know, what? I think I have a really cool interactive way I can make this. And I want to play around with making, you know, a dashboard like, cool, awesome, go back, go back and do that as a kind of a side project. Um, I just don't want you guys to fall in the hole of like focusing on one little thing versus focusing on the overall thing that will probably be the most focused. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Cool, awesome. Um, but thank you, Alvaro, for adding that in because it definitely can be an extra thing that you can have if you have time. All right, um, common issues we might have. Um, so these are things that I've noticed from students in general it's like not having a clear goal. Sometimes people will start off with a data set, but without the business problem or a clear business problem to start off with. And they basically just kind of meander through the data and aren't really sure what to do. So I would say, again, the first step is identifying that business understanding. So make sure you have a clear goal of like, what is the thing I'm trying to solve? And how do I know when I'm done going through this? Like, so actually specifying what questions you want to answer and to what degree will be really helpful. And maybe, for example, you might have some questions in there and you find out as you kind of go into your projects, like, actually, this is a really hard one. I don't think I can answer it completely. And that's perfectly fine. You've now answered part of that question saying, hey, this is really tough. These are the things we'd have to do to probably solve this problem. Um, but having that clear goal versus like trying to meander and trying to figure something out is going to help you uh, finish on time and also finish something that looks good and you can talk about. Um, thinking you have to have good results. I see this a lot where people say like, I just want to do another model. Like I got a, I got a 40% accuracy. Like I think I can do another model, stuff like this. And 
that's cool. great. Like, and I'll try my best to kind of help you guys along say, okay, like maybe do these tweaks and stuff like that. Cause a lot of times the data you guys will do is something I've never seen before. Like I might not have seen this data at all. So your guess might be as good as mine, but and I might help you guys go towards it. But again, your goal isn't to get good results. Your goal is to basically talk about your insights overall. And in the real world, you might have a problem where they, okay, we need to do this prediction and your best result might be 40% and you go back to the business and they say, you know what? 40% is great. Like this is better than what we'd expect. We can use this. Or they say, you know what? That's a really tough problem. Let's just scrap it. Like it turns out like that's just not going to work out. Or they say, you know what? This looks really tough. Let's spend even more time on trying to figure out this problem. So again, your good results, like you don't need to have amazing results or good results to have a successful project. Okay. Um, be careful with the data size and complexity. So I usually see people on the side of like having too much data and too much complex. And I say too much in the sense that like, it's a lot of data to handle and they're not sure how to handle it because they haven't had too much experience. And start off then if you have something very, very massive, and this is why I want you guys to share with me what you have, is if you have something really massive, we can always like chunk it up and at least do a portion of that. And then if you really want to process a large amount, we can talk about different techniques to actually do this kind of thing, um, whether that's Spark, but to be honest, usually it's easier just to chunk it up and process it bit by bit. Um, versus trying to like handle it, but identifying when the data might be too large or too complex. Okay. Um, this also kind of goes on the side of like, if you're trying to web scrape, um, if you're trying to web scrape or trying to get data, novel data that doesn't exist yet, I, I, I like kind of put you guys in like the cautious mode of being like, know that web scraping can take a long time, to get the data that you want. And even then you might still hit like pain points or maybe it might make sense to first start off with data that is similar or, you know, close enough to want to have, do your model there. And then at the end, actually scraping new data to test out your models or test out your analysis and stuff like that. But instead of having that as the main focus um, might be a good idea. Okay. Um, hopefully this is all making sense so far. Um, let's see here. Thinking it must be completely novel. Um, like I said, it doesn't have to be something that no one's ever seen. It doesn't have to be a graduate thesis. Like that's not the point of this, right? Your point is basically to show an end-to-end -end project and stuff. Um, however, don't like, I'll tell you right now, don't use a Titanic data set, for example. Um, don't use data sets like too much. Like I would even say like, um, like a couple of the ones that we did for the, pro like don't just do like the Kaggle, like let's say you did like the NLP project that we had for mod four. Don't then just do like the image classification for mod for project, I want you guys to find a business problem and then use a data set as needed. I will say is that you can use data sets that are really well known for an interesting problem, but identify that problem first. Don't regurgitate stuff. Um, I, I don't really have to say it because it sounds, I mean, it sounds silly when I say it out loud, like don't copy someone else's capstone. It's like out there on the, online, stuff like that. And not so much to be quite honest, not because it's like, oh, the moral thing and stuff like this, or like, oh, Victor will know and he'll fail you and flat iron repercussions, but mostly like for your sake, it's like you want to do something that actually stands out that you can share with other people too. So, um, but that means you can also look at other people's stuff too. Like there's no reason to say, oh, someone's doing something very similar to mine. What kind of techniques do they do? What pain points do they hit? Because that's what you'll do in the real world, right? You'll see what other people have done and see what, people, um, what to learn from it. Um, but it doesn't have to be completely new. Okay. Um, that's true. Making it too big of a project. And this is usually when people say like, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, like a bunch of questions or like, oh, I want to make this dashboard and I want to do this and I want to do this model and I want to do some analysis on this. Like one problem, I, I, one project I've heard someone propose is like, I want to take so, um, street signs, identify where the street signs are, pull up the, the actual like street sign itself, read what words that are on the street side and then use natural language processing to see what thing it should be. And I'm like, that's a lot. <laughs> like, that's a lot to do in one project and stuff. Um, it's like, maybe take one aspect of that project and focus on that. And then if you really want that project, like they were really excited about this, then you can say, hey, like do that project, like one part of it. And then like, after you're done, like graduated and done with your capstone, do those other pieces and continue on your project and kind of fill in those parts. Um, so that's usually one mistake I see people. And usually this happens when they don't tell me. So like, that's why, again, you guys won't do that because you guys will tell me what your project is. And so you guys won't have to worry about it, but just be aware. Um, and then not considering the time it takes to learn something completely new. So sometimes I hear people learn a new library, which is awesome. It's great. 
note that there is a little bit of a learning curve for anything you've learned that you haven't done before. And so I've heard people try learning like PyTorch for the first time, which is awesome, but know that they have to take time to learn some PyTorch. I've heard people learning how to do it, basically a dashboard, right? Making those dashboard stuff, which is awesome, but they have to take the time to learn how to make a dashboard do what they want it to do. Um, I've even had people say, oh, like I've done a time series and they found a cool library that does a really good job of predicting this time series. But then I even like literally was debugging with them like, oh, it turns out this is an issue that like literally other people were having. So note that if you find other libraries in the wild or try to learn some new technique, it's going to take time and you can do it. Just kind of be aware that that's going to be a portion of the amount of time that you're going to have to dedicate. Um, so just factor that in. Okay, cool. Makes sense. All right. Any questions, any comments? No. How about overall questions and comments? See, look, it's completely blank. I don't have anything to say on here. So. Well, one, one thing that you <laughs> said that is definitely important is that you should know, um, you should know how it is that you're going to know that you've complete that you've completed your work. In other words, you should have already um, some set of criteria that says, if I meet these, I know that that my job is done. As opposed mm -hmm. to just trying to do something without really defining what that moment is going to be, because then you may never reach it. Exactly, and that's really important to state, Alvaro. Like it, like. I cannot emphasize this enough. And it's not just for this project, it's also a skill to have beyond this project with your projects you'll do in your career is identifying when you're gonna mark this project as done. And you might have to reassess as you're doing the project, but having at least like a firm idea of what you expect will be helpful because that means you have a skull site. It's a lot easier to take forever on something when you don't have a specific goal. Even if that goal ends up being completely out of reach for whatever you're doing, at least you knew that that was the goal and you can readjust versus like going into a project and you're not really sure exactly what to do, but you're like, I'll figure it out once I explore the data. Like that's usually not a good sign because you will explore that data forever and like not know exactly what to do. Or you'll go down rabbit holes and basically hit pain points and stuff and realize to go back and stuff and you're never going to be done. Yeah, because that's a that that's actually a real skill when you're out on, on you know in the real world. You have to be able to any project you work on. If you're in charge of it, you have to come up with a roadmap for it, mm -hmm. and you have to be able to scope it out. And as part of that scope, you have to be able to to uh, you know to identify where the hand uh, where the handover is at the end, and how it is that we're going to know that we got to that point in the end. Because the, exactly. the person who's received the person that you're you know. Um, handing over the project to at the end is going to want to know that you met this, 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 and that. So it's all got to be identified at the beginning of the project. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly right. As best you can identify at the beginning is going to help you. I will say is that when you're doing something like this, you might have an idea of a project and you want to see how well do you think this, because you might grab data and explore just a little bit just to see like, does this seem reasonable? It just to make sure it's like, well, what kind of things can we answer from there? But doing that as early on as possible before moving forward is going to help you. Um, yeah, definitely do that. There's something called, um, if you guys have heard like MVP, minimal viable product. Um, has anyone heard this term before? I see some nonsense. Okay, good. Um, if you haven't heard it before, um, basically it just means like, what's the minimal amount of thing that we need to basically say that we have something like a product, something that we can use, something that can be useful for your stakeholders, you know, and there's a whole bunch of ways. Uh, usually we talk about this in software engineering, but it applies just as much as data science where you say, hey, like if you want to build something, let's, I'm just going to say something like a speech detection or something like that. What is the minimal amount of effort we need to have before we can say, yes, we have what we needed. Um, and then you go backwards and say, okay, what's the simplest thing I can do to solve that problem? And usually that simplest thing is relatively quick versus trying to do something that's more complex that would get better results, but it's gonna take more time. And what's nice about that is that if you can talk in those terms and think in those terms, that's again where hiring managers, managers will really like you because they're like, hey, like this person's not gonna meander a long time trying to do this really complex thing and have nothing to show for it over like six months. It's like, if you can at least have a first part something to show for it and then iterate on top of that that's usually um a much more valuable process because then you can identify pain points um if anyone's familiar with agile development has anyone heard agile before 
see some thumbs up too. Um, again, usually more for software engineering, but I think it does um, apply a lot in data science and stuff like that, where Agile basically you get something that works. It's not exactly what you might want at the very end, but it's something that you can kind of see in what the observation. So think of like, I think of it like in models, it's like having a really basic model. Your basic like baseline model might literally be a formula like not anything fancy, just literally like an equation essentially say, oh, if this happens, then do this. That might be your model. And that might actually do pretty decently and say, okay, like, well, can we do better than this with a little bit more effort? And that's where your iteration is coming from. Okay. So. Basically prototyping your work. Exactly. Prototyping. Yeah. Um, you know, we never had that, that uh, talk on baselining. Yeah. So that's something we can definitely talk about um, over these next few study groups and stuff like this. I try to make it so like um, at least like once a week we can talk about like a subject and kind of a little more lecture based like we kind of have with study groups, but then also give you guys time to ask questions too. Um, so I'll make sure you kind of put that up ahead of time that way you guys can say, okay, we can talk about these things. Um, so one of them I mentioned is probably dashboards. We'll do that maybe in a couple weeks. Um, baseline might be a good one to identify too. I'm saying like, hey, like what do you do when we talk about a baseline model? Like what does that look like and what kind of effort do you need to put into it? So, yeah, um, cool. Any other questions, comments? No, pretty good. Yeah, so you guys are all set for Capstone. Um, yeah, so again, references, right? There's the actual repo for you guys to um, make sure you guys read that part. I will show you real quick on the curriculum. It's a little, a little confusing to be quite honest, um, partly because I think they kind of made the Capstone talk about for in campus versus online, which are slightly different because in campus does things a little bit differently than uh, we do here online, because uh, we do things better here online since everyone now here is online. But anyway, um, one thing basically they talk about like no off the shelf data uh, sets, strong data exploration. This, I hate when they do this, um, for relevant data visualizations, I'm not going to go through your, your thing go, oh, there's one, there's two, there's three, four. Okay, we're good. We don't have to look at any more visualizations. Your point is to give insight. So if you can do that, if you were to make a visualization and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is everything I need in this one visualization. It's super easy to understand. It's not complicated and it's concise. Oh my gosh. And it's one visualization. Awesome. Probably not going to happen. But um, if it takes you more than four data visualizations to tell a story, do that. Like you want to use whatever is best for your project and what you're trying to do. Um, make use of supervised learning. Again, this is where I said like, I am very relaxed on this. Um, I don't think that's ne a necessary part of it. Um, it likely will be a part of most people's projects, but it's not, in my opinion, it's not a necessary part. So just talk to me if you feel like you need to deviate from this part, just so I can make sure you, I guide you in the right direction. So you have a project that still is going to be a capstone and still going to be something that is um, something you can be able to talk about in an interview and stuff like that. Okay. Um, yeah. I'll talk about the data science process, awesome and crispy M. That's probably the main ones you'd actually actually use. Um, Well-defined goals, all that's good stuff. And then this is the part I want to show you guys the deliverables. And this is where like it's it's confusing. I feel like it makes it sound like there's different parts that we didn't have before. Whatever we had for the mod four, mod three, mod two, mod one projects, that's the same deliverables you have for the capstone. So that means your non-technical presentation, a PDF, right, your slide deck. Uh, your Jupyter notebook, right, or notebooks possibly, uh, your technical work, um, and then also your video recording, right, of your non-technical presentation. So basically, it's like a practice run of what you'll do in the assessment, and then your blog posts associated with the capstones, um, the project itself. So we talked about that. Um, there's a couple things in here that are I think you should include, um, and I'll emphasize them too. Um, but it makes it sound like they're separate. It's an abstract section. Um, having something that basically is some, that summarizes your results. I'm just looking for some kind of summary. Um, and it's good to have that upfront and easy to find for another person reading your um, project in your repo. And then having an organized readme. And we'll talk about readmes too. I think we talked about them last time um, a while ago. Like, I think it was actually before I went on parental leave. So, um, uh, we'll talk about that again, make sure you have a decent readme that someone can read very quickly, read me, right, uh, on your repo um, without having to dig into your new notebook. So making sure you have that. But really the main thing is like your non-technical presentation, your technical work, your blog posts, and your video recording. Those are the really four parts. Okay. Cool. 
Any questions? Hmm? Easy pie, right? So um, I'll talk about this about choosing a project really quickly. Um, oh, I should, well, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna go a little bit over time. So if anyone wants to leave, you know, um, this is recorded, but uh, let's just talk about real quick about choosing a project. I won't go over it general advice today because we talked about a whole bunch of it, but we'll go over it again um, in the future. So let's see here. There we go. So choosing a topic. This was actually made um, with another instructor back for like the mod old mod four project um, where you chose your project. So there's a little bit stuff that's a little different, um, but I think it's some good general advice. So some things you want to think about is like what kind of ex what is your own personal experience and what industry you want to go. So if you have experience in finance, for example, I had um, someone who was a financial advisor who was doing a finan uh, finance project and stuff like that. And then use that experience, like use that, right? Talk about that um, for your project. If that's the direction you want to go, like you can think about what things you want to do. Um, usually what I have people say like, I, you know, I don't know what I want to choose. And like, um, like, well, what kind of experience do you have? You can definitely use that. But also just pick something that you can be passionate about. A lot of people will do like sports pro um, projects and stuff like that, where they can talk about different sports and talk about the analysis in there, which are really interesting and stuff like that. Um, and to be honest, like it might not necessarily get you, it might not be relevant to the job you're applying to in the future, but it's something that you can talk about passionately and concisely and talk about what you found and that's gonna be useful. So if it's something that's important to you, go ahead and pursue that. Um, for me, for example, I said like American Sign Language was something that was really interesting to me. And that's something I pursued, you know, at some point. And that was a really great project that I ended up doing. Um, at least, you know, I felt it was a really great project. Okay. Um, some considerations. Now, this is where like, this is a, a loose one for me, is that the more data you have, the better in the sense of like being able to use it for a variety of machine learning models. Um, 20,000 data points is probably like really what you'd want at least to do like a deep learning project. Um, if you don't have 20,000, there are exceptions. There's some things you can do, some techniques, but I want you to identify that and then say, hey, this looks really great. It's only got 10,000 data points. Like, what do you think, Victor? And I say, well, maybe we can find some other data sets or maybe there's some techniques we can use to basically up and pull that data set and we can talk about those kind of things, okay? Um, but 20,000 is probably what you want. Continuous features are usually like the ideal things, like numerical features for most data sets. Um, it makes easier for inference and it just helps to make, it's easier for the model usually to learn these things because basically if we have a continuous feature, it's easier to find like a, something between 10 and 20 and we can say, oh, well, there are 15 exists. Where if we had like red and blue, it's like, does something exist between red and blue? Can we say that for this data set? Does that make sense? Like, we're not really sure. So that's why continuous features tend to be a little bit easier for inference itself, but not every time. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, so kind of similar to this is that data sets with the high categorical features. Now it says more than 50%. I will say is that you can do data sets that are very categorical based, um, but we have to be kind of wary of like what we're gonna do and like what procedure. Um, sometimes if it's just category, it just becomes a problem of just being like, like just matching the right element into what? Like basically, oh, if it's this thing, it's category A and it's also category, category B, in category C, then therefore it must be this. Like that kind of sometimes happens. So we just have to be aware of like what kind of data sets we have. This is what I'm talking about, like being data is not complex enough for boring data where basically it's too categorical where basically just by definition, we already know what the classification is. Um, so just kind of be wary of that. Um, oops, you can do DIY data sets, so like web scraping, stuff like that. But just remember, it's gonna take time to actually collect this. I suggest is trying to find a data set that is similar to what you'd want to web scrape and then if you have time, web scraping to get more additional data, okay? Um, this next slide here. Uh, just when you actually pull the data, check what the format is. Is it a CSV? Is it JSON? Is it an API? You know, what are you gonna use to get this data? Um, image data, if it's a new format like audio analysis, right? You wanna make sure you know how to process that and what kind of effort it's gonna take you for your computer or your server or whatever you're gonna use, like Google Colab. What's it gonna take to actually process this information? So keep that in consideration as you're kind of like getting your data sets. Um, if you do get some new format or you're getting confused or whatever, like that's what I'm here for, right? Reach out and say, hey, like I got this thing, like what do I do with this? I might, be, I might have seen something before, I might not have. Um, you might actually have a better idea on it, but we'll find out, okay? All right, um, any questions so far about any of these things I kind of went over? I think they're pretty self-explanatory. I think I more or less repeated this also on the Mod 4 project talking about like 
what things is looking, well, maybe not, because I guess you can choose a mod for data set, um, but hopefully you can see that where my reasoning comes from. Okay. Some things to be careful of. Um, this is where like, again, this is not so much applies to the capstone because a lot of these things like we want to attack these problems, but like, just be aware like NLP computer vision, those kind of data sets can be very complex and to just be aware like what kind of time and effort is. For those of you guys who, give me a thumbs up who's doing the image recognition project for mod four. Yeah, takes a lot of effort, right? For that, <laughs> that image recognition one, right? Yeah, so you guys already know firsthand and that's something with relatively small data. So something just to consider, right? Is that this stuff. NLP is very similar in that way is that you might have a large amount of data and knowing what to do with it and like how to actually get more data too, especially if it's a very specific domain. Um, so just kind of be aware of that. Um, anything that requires human input. If you need to do something like, I don't know, like the extreme of this would be like going on the street corner and like taking a survey or whatever, like don't do that, right? <laughs> like that's gonna take too much effort. Um, but anything that involves human input, like where you're getting that data in, um, be wary of this. So form data and stuff like this, it's gonna be a lot of cleaning. Um, I will tell you, I've been, um, I don't know if I shared this with you guys. Um, I've been kind of tracking a little bit of like my babies, like eating and pooping habits and stuff like that. Um, which has been lots of fun. And I have spreadsheets and spreadsheets of like information, but I actually use like a Google home, um, you know, like Amazon Echo equivalent and basically say like, hey, you know, Corey uh, had a diaper level two, you know, which is my code for saying, oh, there's a, some, there's some poop but not a huge amount of poop. Um, that even though I set it up and I'm the one saying it, it still messes up. It still says, oh, did you say like, I don't know, like it, it does weird things like, oh, you said 2.1? And like, it's like, oh, no, that's not what I was trying to say, but okay. Um, there are also things like, like, oh, had formula, but then it thinks I said something like some weird word or whatever, and it records that as, you know, let's say like beehive or whatever. And you're like, what the heck is this? So anything with user input is bound to gonna have some mistakes and stuff like that to happen. So just kind of be aware of that when you're collecting data and knowing how much cleaning you're gonna have to take into doing it, okay? Um, maybe I'll let release to you guys that. It's definitely dirty data, um, huh, diapers. All right, uh, science focused. If you are doing anything science focused, um, great, awesome. Just be wary that there might be some information that you might not be familiar with, right? So make sure that you look at the data set first and understand what this is and make sure that you can actually do it, right? You can actually do this project. Um, unless, of course, if you have background in it, you know, then, then you might be fine. But just know that if you have more science-based focus data sets, there might be extra amount of like domain knowledge you have to get in order to do this project well. Okay, sound pretty good? Cool. And I'll just go to the last couple of slides that um, they had. Uh, this is, uh, anyone know Trello, Kanban boards, things like that? So this is one way you can organize stuff. Maybe we can talk about that. Uh, basically just having defined of like when you're going to do your project and stuff like this. Um, especially if you have something like DIY data sets, like if you're scrubbing data or scraping data, right? You wanna make sure that you take that time and effort. Um, I, I do some of this sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, I already know enough where I actually just outline it and I just outline my stuff and then I just work off that outline. Um, so whatever works well for you, this is a great time to actually explore to figure out how you organize and attack a problem. Because this is part of your capstone that you can talk about in an interview saying, how did you actually figure out what to do and when to do it. So that's also an important part. Okay, um, cool. And then lastly, I'll share this uh, ac this whole, um, what's it called, this slide deck, but there's some links here for different data sets to actually get data. I personally like the Google data set search. Have I shown you guys this before? Google data set search? I see a nod from Edward, I see a shake from Ed Alvaro. Um, yeah, it's kind of like Google for like data. So I said like, oh, like, you know, like data. It's like, I don't know. Um, bikes. I don't know, something about bikes. Um, and you can basically find different data sets based on that topic of what you're looking at. For example, there's a bike sharing data set here in Kaggle. There's also this from data.gov um, for bike routes. So it's a really kind of fun way to just like look for different um, data sets and stuff. And you can get it from many different areas. Um, it is Google. So just know it, it probably has its stuff indexed the most. So for example, like Kaggle is indexed very frequently on here. Um, but there's a lot of data that you can find and see what, you know, what's interesting. You can also do certain things like, you know, certain like data for download formats and stuff like this. Yeah. Any questions? I think I saw a hand. No? 
right? Um, so this is anyway, that's Google data search. There's a whole bunch of things like New York City, um, New York City open data portal. So you can actually find some data from here. That's from New York City. So people have found some really great things from here. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Kaggle data sets, um, we mentioned about Kaggle before. Um, you can actually find a lot of different data sets on here. Um, it can be really useful. And what's really nice is that people actually, if you have this data set here, you can actually sometimes see what other people have done in notebooks and actually see how they use that data and what they explored. So it might not be exactly what you are gonna do, but it might be something that you see how they explored it or things that they notice and stuff, which again, can be super helpful when you're trying to go through your analysis and actually try to go through. But, oh yeah, you see this project right here? That's why I love showing sure you guys these notebooks because you see all this, oh, look at all these pretty graphs and stuff like this. Guess what I don't see? I don't see any markdown. So I don't know what this person's seeing, right? This is where you guys will do better than this. Is that you guys will have a little markdown saying, oh look, this distribution looks like this, or oh, I noticed this thing. But anyway, um, really useful on Kaggle. And then there's also um, Reddit has data set, a data set subreddit. I don't know if you guys have run across this or big Reddit users, but um, this data set uh, Reddit, basically the subreddit, they have new data sets coming through all the time and stuff like that. And it's kind of fun just to kind of go through it. But um, if I'm gonna point you in one direction in particular, I probably would look at Google dataset search and Kaggle datasets. I found most interesting stuff from there personally. Um, but no, there's a whole bunch of different resources you can use. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, any questions on this guy? Or anything I kind of showed in this uh, little slide deck? No? Cool. So I'll make sure to share this notebook with you guys, which has a link to these things, um, as well as I'll share the direct link for this too, so that way you guys can um, go through it. But yeah, so that's kind of all I had to talk about for capstone stuff. But before I kind of mention the last thing, which is going to be about mod four stuff, are there any questions about capstone that we may have not covered or confusion? No? Feel pretty good? Yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. So let's talk about mod four real quick. Um, it's mod four assessments start this week, right? Uh, I know some people have already signed up for uh, times. I know not everyone has. And part of that's because there's not enough times for me on that one week. So um, I will open up times um, after we get offline. I'll open up some times for next week. And you guys just let me know if there's a time, if you're like, you're looking at the times available and if I can't find a time available that works out for me, just message me so we can figure something out. Um, really, I would say is that like, the sooner you do the assessment, the better. That way you can move on to your capstone. Um, you can technically kind of take your time, like you have quite a bit of time to finish this mod for project assessment. However, I would say, I don't want you to do that. I would say finish it ASA, you know, ASAP, right? So you can move on to your capstone. Um, of course, if you have to take some more time, you know, that's fine, just let me know, um, but yeah, I think that's the main thing. And I know, Mike, you found that the PDF link for the rubric uh, was broken. So I'm going to try to fix that. But I also put it on Slack so you guys can find the actual rubric. It's pretty much the same as we did before, um, but at least you can reference that. And essentially what we do, like before, you turn in all your stuff. Make sure you turn in everything on Learn before the actual assessment date. Um, that way I can take a look at it and just identify if there's any like missing points so I can help you out before the actual assessment. Um, but have that turned in. Remember, that's going to be your repo, which includes your presentation, your, um, your technical notebooks, right? All that good stuff. Um, and then your video recording of your own technical presentation and your blog post, right? Your blog post associated with that project. Make sure that's turned in. Um, then the actual assessment. I know it's been a while since I've had assessment with you guys, probably. Um, make sure you, um, we're going to basically, you're going to share your screen for your non-technical. We'll kind of go through that. And then you'll share your screen for your technical piece. And you're just going to go through the code a little bit, much more of a conversation and discussion. Um, you can kind of think about in the terms of like another data scientist who just might not be familiar with this problem. So I kind of say like, you know, maybe a data science team member or a data science manager, someone basically who knows data science, but doesn't know your specific project. Um, and yeah, I think you guys, this is going to be your fourth project. So I feel like you guys probably feel pretty good about like where you're at, hopefully, like on what to expect. Um, but there, are there any questions about the Mod4 project in particular? No, pretty good. Cool. Um, again, I'll put those out there. I'll do that probably right after we get offline and I'll send a message out to everyone saying, hey, this is, you know, use the same link, the dates are open again. Again, if you can't find time, just let me know. All right. 
Um, yeah, I think that's, I want to say there was something else, but I think that's it. Um, any questions? No? All right. <laughs> I feel like it's been me talking a lot today. So, um, oh, I remember what I was going to say. Um, okay, so we have our normal study group time again on Thursday. Um, but so here's the thing is I am technically going on second part of my fraternity leave, but it's not as scary as it sounds. I'm not going to be going away. Um, hopefully, fortunately for you guys, unfortunately, I'm not sure. But um, I'm just going to basically going to be having slightly shortened hours on um, starting in October. And so what that looks for you guys basically is that like, I won't be online until a little bit later in the day, but I might, we're going to shift the time a little bit into the later position. Now I know um, like Nadine, I know you like a little bit like, um, <laughs> like that time is more for you. So like definitely talk with me so we can work that out. Um, we can probably make an exception to make this kind of work out well. Um, but what we might do then is we might shift the study groups just a little bit later, or at least one of the study groups a little bit later in the day. What's your guys' overall reaction if we were to like move, let's say Thursdays or Tuesdays closer into the after, like into more closer into the evening? Any reaction to that? Give some thumbs up, some nods. I know Nadine, like you're already super late. What's like 11, 11 p.m. over there? I don't know, 1 a.m. Like I don't know how you're awake right now. It's 10 right now, it's okay. 10? Okay, all right, you're not too bad, right? So yeah, so um, yeah, definitely I know like moving the time later and stuff like that. Um, might change things up, but um, at least having it off like that might be kind of helpful. Um, I'm even playing with the idea because we're going to Capstone. We'll have to see, don't quote me on this yet, um, as I might kind of make more kind of like an open office hours where it's kind of like people can drop in and ask questions um, and I'll just kind of be around and then you guys can also work and stuff like that. Um, and that might be a little more earlier in the day just so you guys can do stuff. So I'm playing around with a whole bunch of stuff because um, I'm also to be frank with you guys, I'm also taking care of another cohort as well who's in Capstone, like mid Capstone, and some opening up the office hours for them. But to be honest, I think it's mostly gonna be you guys. So, but we might have some people who shop in every once in a while. Um, but I think that might help a little bit for you guys to be able to have that time to ask and stuff like that. So I uh, just wanna give you guys that warning. But so look on, keep a lookout on that on Slack. I might give you guys more information soon. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, I won't keep you guys any longer than this. Um, great seeing you all again. Um, and remember Thursday, we'll have time for open questions. Um, and I'll just put more of the stuff out. If we go over a topic, I'll make sure to put that out ahead of time that way you guys know if we're gonna talk about something like building a baseline model or dashboard or something like that. Okay. All right, everyone, take care and have a great day. Bye.